So I have no standard deviation statistical analyses, right brain, left brain, um, I'm on the other side. So those of you who are thinking, wow, that's a lot of data, I don't have any of that. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about racial disparities in bail, but let me just start out by saying, um, what causes racial and ethnic disparities in the criminal justice system? I ask that rhetorically. I don't think it's racism, implicit or explicit. I think it's discretion, right? Who has it and how they wield that power? Because if you're racist or implicitly biased, but you have no power to make discretionary decisions, you have very little ability to affect the kind of disparities we see in the criminal justice system or cause those kinds of disparities. So we don't want a criminal justice system where police officers and judges and prosecutors have no discretion. We've seen the horrors of sentencing guidelines and justice by the numbers. We know it's not always just. We want a criminal justice system where people exercise their discretionary authority in a way that is just and fair and colorblind, and we don't have that. Um, every bit of data we have tells us we don't have that. We don't need a whole lot more studies or any studies telling us that there's racial disparities in the criminal justice system, and we absolutely do not need any more studies telling us that there are racial and ethnic disparities in bail. We have had studies consistently showing racial and ethnic disparities in bail since the 1960s, and any study that shows that there's not racial and ethnic disparities in bail is flawed, and we know it's flawed. We know it's flawed. So let me just back up and tell you a little bit about bail. Why is it so important? Um, first of all, bail, the decision about what's gonna happen to a presumptively innocent arrestee, uh, whether they're gonna go home until their case is resolved or be locked up until their case is resolved, that decision alone we know from all of the data from all of the criminologists who've conducted national, regional, and local studies across the country for 30, 40 years, we know that that decision fuels mass incarceration, it fuels the school to prison pipeline, and we know for sure that it causes racial and ethnic disparities that reverberate throughout the entire criminal justice system. That single decision about whether you're gonna be locked up or released influences whether you're gonna get a plea offer, whether you're gonna get a good plea offer, and it influences what sentence is gonna be imposed. Every public defender in a 50 mile radius of my voice will tell you it is much easier for a judge to keep a person locked up who's already locked up than it is to impose an incarceration sentence on a client who walks in off the street. So if you are locked up pretrial, in many ways that bail decision has changed the adjudication trajectory of your entire case. So a little bit of Bail 101. Now there should be a slide. There we go. Um, so I'm not gonna give any of the statistics. I think statistics are boring and uh, if you go to, I do, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I apologize, I do, I do to my heart, to my core, I can't take it. But <laughs> they're important, they're important though. I, I agree with you, they're important, but bore me to tears. But, so, um, so what we know is the purpose of bail is not to keep a person locked up. The reason why we have bail is so that a person has an opportunity to get out. And at some point in our history, at some point it made sense to make that decision about whether you get released or held based upon money. The idea being that if you give us a certain amount of money, we know you'll come back to court because you want that money back. Right? That made some sense. It no longer makes any sense. It no longer makes any sense because the courts have determined that the purpose of bail is twofold. One, the purpose of bail is to ensure that the person returns to court. So we don't have a scenario that we had before where you leave court and you ride out west and you're no longer going to be found and they're going to need bounty hunters to track you down out in the Yukon and you're going to be lost out, you know, pew, pew, pew. We don't have that anymore, right? Most of the people who are locked up in our criminal justice system are poor and they have no resources to go anywhere, right? All of my clients who didn't come to court, they were at home, at their girlfriend's house, at their grandmother's house. It was not hard to find them. And today, if someone doesn't come to court, you wanna find them, check their Facebook page. Their status probably tells you exactly where they are. So we don't have this problem. And in the District of Columbia, where they don't have money bail, they have an 88 to 90% return rate among people who are released. So 
making people pay money to ensure they're coming back to court is really not needed. The second purpose of bail is to make sure that the person who is released does not cause a danger to the community, that they're not threatening witnesses or they're not um, you know, trying to bribe people. We know that doesn't happen at an alarming rate either. Right? And even if it did happen at an alarming rate, money is not going to make that go away. Like if I'm the guy who's going to bribe some witnesses and threaten the victim and I happen to be rich, I don't know that you're going to stop me by making me pay bail. Right? The two things have little to do with each other. So where we are right now is trying to figure out how can we reform the bail system and how can we address racial and ethnic disparities in bail? We know that simply reforming your practices without addressing racial and ethnic disparities results in racial and ethnic disparities. In North Carolina, they reformed the front end of their criminal justice system and made sure that there were no longer uh, over-incarcerating uh, people and having overcrowded jails. But the rate at which they were locking up African-American and Latino defendants remained the same as their jail population decreased by 50%. So you have to also address the racial and ethnic disparities. So the good news is we have the data. The good news is we actually know how to fix this problem with a pretrial services agency, right? We know the causes, the causes of racial and ethnic disparities in bail would be putting people in pretrial detention because of there's implicit bias by the bail official. We know it's caused by the use of money and poor people don't have it and black and brown people are overrepresented among the people who don't have money. And we know that um, releasing people with pretrial supervision based upon evidence-based determinations about their background work in making sure that people come back to court and don't commit other crimes. Thank you.